An interesting one for you this morning. Six couples will start a High Court challenge today to demand legal recognition for humanist weddings in England and Wales. In a moment, we'll speak to a couple who've delayed getting married for the last 10 years to wait for a change in the law. First though, let's hear from Jamie and Megan who had a humanist wedding but could only legally call themselves man and wife once they'd backed that up with a civil ceremony. It's a shame that it wasn't legal. So we had to organise for a slightly separate ceremony to take place in the house where we got married shortly after to make it legal. In an infinite universe that has an infinite number of stars, it's frightening to stop and think about how big it is and how small and insignif insignificant we are on Earth. But right now, in this very moment, I feel bigger than the universe because I don't need an infinite number of stars. I just need one and she's standing right in front of me. It seems incredible, really, that you can do so much nowadays. We have so much freedom to sort of be creative and, um, you know, do lots and lots of different things. And it almost seems a little bit silly nowadays that um, you can't sort of be married legally um, through a humanist ceremony. It's at the end of the day, you know, a wedding is the celebration of, of two people. It doesn't matter what that day looks like. It's what's important to the couple, especially now more so than ever before. You know, it's been heartbreaking to see a lot of our friends having to rearrange their That's weddings funny. and postpone due to coronavirus. And I think um, by opening this up and, and making humanist weddings legal, you're only sort of helping with that flexibility of um, being able to sort of rearrange next year, maybe mm -hmm. change your, your plans. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Uh, let's speak to Kate Harrison and to Christopher Sanderson, one of the couples who are taking part in today's legal challenge. So join us uh, from Lincolnshire. Good morning to you both. Thank you very much for being live on the programme. Here we are. Um, morning. morning. Give, us a, give us an idea and talk us through why it's important to you to be able to have a humanist wedding and not to have that sort of separate civil ceremony to make sure that it's fully legal. Well, we. it feels really... I'm a humanist. Christopher's a humanist. Um, been a humanist for a very long time and it feels absolutely critical to me that if we ever get married it has got to be in the way that reflects our humanist beliefs in the same way that I could get married if I had a religious belief but I don't um, and uh, I'm afraid that I've said to Christopher that unless the law changes I'm not prepared to get married to him <laughs> So it's pretty important to us, yeah. Oh my goodness, Christopher, that's quite a thing, isn't it? So you've got to wait now for the law to change. And what is it about a humanist ceremony that is different from a civil ceremony? Can you explain that to us? Yeah, well, uh, I have been waiting quite a long time, actually, 14 years. So I've, I've had time to think about what's different. And the main difference is it's freedom. You're not restricted by some other people's choices about how you do things. You can do it in your own way. You can have who you want uh, as your celebrant. You can get to know the celebrant in some depth. You're not going to have 15 minutes with someone with a tick list to decide what questions are going to be asked. So you have a much more freer day and it's a day that you can really, really enjoy all the way through. Much more personal. I mean, it would absolutely be unique to us because, you know, we would we could write the whole thing ourselves if we want to, and we and we would know that the celebrant shared our beliefs as well, um, which is which is very important. It's the biggest day in most people, you know, one of the biggest days anyway in most people's lives, and um, I think it's high time that we we're able to do it in the way that we want to, and also, of course, in line with how the rest of the United Kingdom is able to now um, celebrate marriage. That's what I wanted to ask you. Sorry to jump in, Kate. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Because, Christopher, obviously, you know, Kate's saying she doesn't want to get married until either your legal challenge is successful or the law changes. But have, have you suggested to Kate that you'd go to Scotland or to Northern Ireland where humanist ceremonies are legal? How's that conversation gone in the past? Well, we don't want to start putting pressure back on Gretna Green, I don't think. I think <laughs> well, we could have a humanist one in Scotland, we know that. I, th I think uh, that what we want to do is we want to try and make it something that gets it moving forward for everyone. 
okay, we're we're just one couple, and we could, like you say, run away. We could say we'll we'll fall to whatever precious society puts upon us, and we'll sort of cheat our way into a wedding. We don't want to do that. We want to do it fair and square and honestly. And we want to make a future for everyone else to be able to have your witness weddings. And if the legislation changes, what is your plan for your wedding? What do you want? <laughs> well, at the moment, it's uh, either our back garden or last night we had a, an offer of another friend's back garden <laughs> or it's on the uh, wonderful beaches of the Lincolnshire coast where mm. we've already uh, done weddings for other people and then they've had to shoot off and go to the register office. So it would be really good if we could stay on the beach all day. <laughs> Sounds like a lovely plan. We wish you both the very best of luck and hope that your wedding eventually happens. That's Kate Harrison and Christopher Sanderson. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. very much. Thanks for talking to us on the programme this morning. Uh,